37 verse 1 to 40. Genesis 37 verse 12 to 36. When we understand how our lives are influenced by our forefathers, we can respond appropriately to that influence. We should appreciate and celebrate the good that has been passed down through our families. Also, we should acknowledge the iniquities of our forefathers, repent of our own sins, and endeavor to overcome the tendency towards specific sins that we have inherited from our forefathers. While we are not held responsible for the sins of our ancestors, we are the substitutable to their areas of weakness and should be alert to these inclinations. Modern day idols that may be crippled into our life, we need to be aware of our temptations and the idols we build in our lives without realizing. The first one is family. Family is important and a major part of all our life experiences. Without family, life won't be rough. But we begin to idolize our family when we see our family unity as inwardly focused hado. But we begin to idolize our family when we see our family unity as an inwardly focused hurdle that is above all other things in life, we should link arms and take the unity of our family to be outwardly focused instead. When family becomes more important than church, caring for other people, and living out the love of Christ Jesus, we have turned our family into an idol. And idol is not only the images built by your forefathers that they serve. Anything you follow more than God becomes your idol. The second one is wealth, riches, money, finance. Many of us desire more than simply surviving. We want to enjoy life and most often that means the wealth. To pursue things we like. God does not wish for us to live in poverty or in constant need. He actually desire all to live a life of abundance. And abundance does not even always mean endless weight. We allow weight to become an idol when it's our own coy pursuit. If we are constantly looking at ways to make an extra money, even at the expense of others, it is very likely wealth is an idol in our life. Be wise with your money is one thing. To take control over your money, it is another. Another sign of wealth be an idol in your life, in your family is if the idea of giving money away makes you cringe, it becomes an idol in your life. If you take great pride in how much money you make and that is the only thing you look for in a job, then it is probably an idol built up in your heart. Wait 
is not a sinful endeavor, but it becomes one when it is your sole pursuit. Wait is good, but don't follow it more than the kingdom of God. The third one is prosperity. Prosperity does not mean just monetary wealth. You might have figure how that money is not everything, but your desire to prosper in different ways has overtaken your life. This is an extreme example, but it is largely rooted in the idol of prosperity. There are many who make the case of abortion because they are not ready for a child. They are not ready to make the life shift of caring for another life because it means giving up so much of their own ambitions and opportunities. So they will lean towards an abortion because of the cost of their personal prosperity. We all want to be prosper, but at what cost is a question I leave for you. What are we willing to give up in order to live a prosperous life? In our educational pursuits, job pursuits, or even relational pursuits, what can you give for you to gain prosperity from God? The fourth one, image. Image is a super stinking idol. There is no one that is free except you liberate yourself to be righteously angry when someone slanders you or speaks ill about you is not bad but many are far more upset when this happens because of how it hurt your image we want to be seen as a certain kind of person in our churches, workplace, communities, and even families. What people think about us matters. It matters so much that you will do anything to protect that image. You will dissolve relationships instead of trying to reconcile because of how much someone hurts your image. Dealing with the ancestral idols. How can we deal with the ancestral idols? The ancestral deities erected by our forefathers in our family home that is affecting everyone today in life. An idol is a material that is worship. It is also anything you hold in our esteem more than God the Almighty. Our forefathers or even some fathers still did worship this idol. An unknown to some of us dedicated all their children and generations Unborn to those idols. The idols in our father's house. Every one of us have been dedicated unknowingly to us. And therefore, we began to experience hardship, problems, backwardness, setback, disappointment, failure. But we can't make a trace where our problem is coming from. It is coming from the ancestral powers walking in your father's house, including your mother's house also, because none is free from this ancestral power. Today, many destinies 
marriages, lives, and even weight have been trapped at the altars where the idols are worshipped. God forbid the worship of idols by the heart of our forefathers or fathers generational causes now operate in the bloodline of families who worship idols. Idols cannot break us away from that causes except the blood of Christ Jesus. You shall not bow down to them or worship them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Punish the children for the sins of their fathers. To the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to thousands of generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Exodus chapter 20 verse 5 to 6 So many females suffer from series of disappointments in marriage because of the presence of a strong spirit husband. Strong spirit husband is a very diabolic human or deity in your life. Anytime a man comes to propose to her in marriage, the person will beat him up mercilessly in his dream and wake up with pains all over his body. Some others were warned to leave her alone or die. Immediately, this happened. The man will run away. From her. On some occasions, she had even sold a wedding gown. And disappointment will begin to move all over her because of the spirit man. Do not make idols or set up an image or a sacred stone for yourself. And do not place a carved stone in your land to bow down before it. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 1. Ancestral idols are terrible. Many destinies, weight and glory of families or individual have been swallowed by this demon's idol. In Judges chapter 6 verse 1 to 27, the children of Israel were living in an object poverty because they were serving the demon idols called Baal. Anytime they were about to harvest their crops, the Midianites would come up like grasshoppers and destroy their harvest. It continued for years until God raised Gideon to be their deliverer. I pray for you. May our Lord Jesus Christ raise your deliverer to deliver you from this your hardship because of your family idols. This young man Destiny or greatness was trapped on the altar of the ancestral idol. His parents served. Anytime he speaks, he was never heard. An angel appeared to him and told him to pull down the evil altar and destroy the idol of his father's house. After he did that, his destiny was released and his helpers could hear his voice. 32,000 persons came, but 
by God cancer. He decided to select only 300 persons from the thousands of people that volunteered to help him. They were able to defeat the large army of the Midianites with just Gideon and 300 persons alone. After he had destroyed the family idols in his father's house. Eventually, that was how the destiny, glory, and weight of Israel, Gideon and his family that was trapped by the ancestral idol, bah, we are released. I pray for you today. May God make your efforts to hear your voice. Acknowledge the sins of your forefathers. Now, you must acknowledge the sins of your forefathers. Nehemiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, and others understood that God wanted them to agree with him about the iniquities of their parents and purpose to not continue them. This man of God acknowledged the iniquities of their fathers when they confessed their sins. In the days where Nehemiah walked to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, Ezra, the priests gathered the people together and read to them heart of the law of God. When they realized how far they had strayed from God's commandment, they repented and the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 2 When Jeremiah realized that God's hand of judgment was upon the land of Judah, he acknowledged the iniquities of their forefathers. He prayed, we acknowledge, O oh Lord, our weakness and the iniquities of our fathers, for we have sinned against thee. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 20. When Daniel discerned by the scriptures that it was time for Israel to be restored to the land, he sought the Lord forgiveness. Through prayer and supplication with fasting, he prayed, O oh Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thy anger and thy fury be torn away from the city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because of our sins. And for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people have become a reproach to all that are above us. Daniel chapter 9 verse 16. There are many families today who are suffering of these family idols. Idols can make you go down. You are trying to climb. The idol in your father's house can bring you down. These are erected by your forefathers. And your father grew up and they took from your forefathers and began to serve this idol. It is affecting you because you are not yet be set free from this idol. This idol can destroy everything concerning you. There are family today who acknowledge idol more than anything else. 
they are ready to sacrifice their children for their deity. But this was not the plan of God when he was creating the world. God don't want us to suffer, but many of our forefathers are bringing suffering to us. Why? Because of their selfishness. They want to serve the man-made God. Know today that you cannot be set free from this family idol, except you seek for liberation, to liberate the land of your forefathers and to bring out yourself out from that idol of poverty, from that spirit of backwardness. You have to set yourself free, liberate your family, remove every idol in your household because they are very dangerous, very wicked. This idol are from the beat of hell. Your forefathers gathered items together and the evil spirit will enter because of the vocation they made into it and it will begin to manifest. And your name, your born child and your born grandchild is inside. How this thing is done, they will carry the earth or the wine and pour upon the deity and make this vow as a covenant between your forefathers and the deity. My children, children are born will serve you. When you grow and you refuse to serve that deity and you say you want to follow Christ Jesus, the anger of the spirit will begin to destroy the household. But one key to defeat them is true prayers. Liberate yourself today and be set free from this family poverty. Set yourself free. Allow Jesus to walk in you. I pray for you today. Every covenant your forefathers have entered with any evil deity that is affecting your life, affecting your destiny, affecting your finance, I break it by the blood of Jesus Christ. I destroy every backwardness, every failure, setback, disappointment in your life caused by this deity in your family. I destroy them by the blood of Jesus Christ. I release fire from the above. The fire of Elijah that destroyed the prophet of Baal. I release that fire to destroy every demonic deity manifesting in your family today. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you be set free. Plead the blood of Jesus in your life. Don't forget. Seek for liberation. To liberate yourself. May God continue to help us. May our Lord God continue to be with us, continue to direct us, continue to assist us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and God bless you.